to another episode of Make Calcutta Relevant Again, the podcast. For all of those who've been watching this uh, this show and for however long we've been trying to put this show together, we know that this is a show for Calcutta lovers, by Calcutta lovers. And we have a very particular brand of a Calcutta lover today, a brand of Calcutta love that I love seeing. And a lot of love will keep coming on in this conversation because this person for me personifies love. For everything that he does, for the way that he loves, it's somebody that I've uh, held with very high regard and a lot of love from me as well. Presenting Thank Neil. Thank you. Thank Neil, you for having me on the show. Absolutely. And, you know, this wouldn't have been, I mean, one of the seasons we would have had you. Uh, he's also traveling a lot. He does a bunch of things. Uh, but uh, I'm glad on the second season itself, we managed to have you. Better late than never. And today, I hope to have an absolutely scandalously good conversation with you uh, the way that we always do you know, always, <laughs> I, hope so too. I hope so too uh, so instead of me the, let's flip the script a little bit because this man really likes flipping the script so I have decided that for today's episode I'm not the host anymore Neil is hosting the show he has incredible energy every time he's on stage he has a mic in his hand uh, he commands the atoms in a room like nobody else so off to you. This is now your show, Neil. Welcome to in. your show. <laughs> I'm not running it. I'm just gonna like, like, gonna push it. Okay. Pushing the envelope. No, but that's good fun. Uh, I think uh, I have been watching bits and pieces of Make Calcutta Relevant again. I have a voice of descent, d- descent. And we all hear about yeah, descent. Yeah. And and um, and my point. I have always thought, why do we have to make Calcutta relevant again? Hmm. My thing is, are we running after the rat race, which is, which is always uh, put forward? for us through and through. And I I was hearing uh, a chat just before that and I realized where you are coming from. Mm. What is your point of view and how you want the conversation to happen? Mm. It's not about making Calcutta only relevant, relevant, but the conversations has to happen. We're inviting relevant people. So that kind of uh, made it work for me because for me, I feel... Calcutta is relevant. Calcutta is absolutely relevant. It, it used to be the, the, the capital of the British India. It, it is one territory which still the dominating center party wants to co- conquer. So, and, and we are always going to be the voice of descent in the sense like we will not abide by the rules given to us. Sure. So, yes, we may not be the economic power, but I think we have the power which is most important of the knowledge and the power of the brain. Yeah. So, we, 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 we are the ones who questions. And that has to be there. I mean, we love questioning. I mean, Libra I think a Calcutton, if, if you had to distill the identity of a Calcutton, yeah. I think nihilism is a big part of it. <laughs> like quasi nihilism. Yeah. Like we do not really like authority, right? Mm. This is not something that we've ever liked. Yeah. And whoever's tried to press down a little bit too hard on us, we've always, you know, struck back. We've resisted. always resisted. Yes. And I think that forms a big part of who we are as Calcuttons. Yes. I think the, you know, coming back to your point of mm. why the title, yeah. there is a provocation in the title itself, yeah. you know, and there are actually, in fact, there are multiple provocations and I'll tell you why this is important. Say, for example, a lot of people talk about why are we only talking about Calcutta? Why is not, why is it not Bengal? Bengal. Right. That is also another yeah. provocation. Why are we even talking about relevance? Do we think Calcutta is not relevant? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not relevant at all. But do you think it could be more relevant? Do you think we could have more conversations? Human beings, essentially, we love provocation. We love talking. And especially Calcuttans. Forget human beings. As Calcuttans, we love making our word heard. heard. We love talking about things that we feel deeply about. Right? We are argumentative. Calcuttans are the most argumentative Indians. So from that perspective... Why not have a provocative text? Absolutely. I understand yes. that where you are coming from. Yeah. I understood yes. the whole point and yes. and I think that makes it relevant. The 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 whole idea to 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 um to scratch the mind and make them think rather than being like a, oh it's a uh it's a great late night show with yes. you. Yes. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do at all. Yeah. Like, I wish I had time for doing a great late night show with Meghdoot. I would, you know, I, that would be such a great idea because it would for once make me p- probably go to sleep uh, like content and feeling like, oh, I've like, finally had a great conversation at the end of a day. I just don't have time. That's the one currency that we're constantly running behind. And I know that's something in common with, you know, with both of us. We're both very high energy people. We're always like, we're doing a bunch of things. And I think this is a good part where we start talking about who you are. 
especially for the people who do not know who is nuda um by profession i am uh, a designer um i've studied fashion i've studied fashion overseas mm. and then i came back by choice that i wanted to settle back in india and uh, it was 18 years ago then i met dev started the brand that mm. time so dev our brand is devar neel <laughs> so r stands for and in bangla so dev devar neel jodi banglay bolte hoy to shetai devar neel er hoy এখন দেবনীল বলেই অনেকে বেশি ভালো করে আইডেন্টিফাই করে বাট ওভার আ পিরিয়ড অফ টাইম আই হ্যাভ অলওয়েজ বিন ভলেন্টিয়ারিং উইথ ডিফারেন্ট অর্গানাইজেশন আই ওয়াজ অলসো আ ভলেন্টিয়ার ইন আ ইন মাই ওন ইউনিভার্সিটি ব্যাক ইন কলেজ সো আই ওয়াজ কলেজে ছিল আই ওয়াজ ইন ক্যানবার ইনস্টিটিউট অফ টেক সো আউট দেয়ার আই ওয়াজ ফার্স্ট দ্য সেক্সুয়ালিটি অফিসার গত ট্রেনিং ফ্রম ডিফারেন্ট ডিফারেন্ট ইউ নো অর্গানাইজেশনস এন্ড দেন লেটার অন টু ইয়ার্স লেটার আই ওয়াজ ইলেকটেড এট দ্য স্টুডেন্ট council head the president of the student council how surprising yeah. neil with his uh, <laughs> with his brand of energy was the uh, general secretary council yeah. of the student body so that was that was first time you know you get to understand what happens how things moves around and how volunteering helps run different different you know organizations or ideas so once i came back here um I have started volunteering with the pride Uh, Kolkata Rainbow Pride Walk and all the other pride events all the LGBTQI events and um, I identify myself as gay and my you know my pronouns are uh, he and his so that's going to be very like politically correct way to say mm-hmm. but otherwise I'm cool with any other pronouns also but um, once I started working with the team for the last 8 10 years and stuff and over the last 2 3 years a core team got formed and we have kind of pushed the boundary moving it towards a more inclusive more larger audience more visibility institutionalize some things which i've seen and i personally think that one of the good things that you guys have done is act a um, institutionalize korte perecho and i don't mean institutionalize only in the form of bringing brands and stuff but also creating structures which work true the moment you say institutionalize again pride and the organ, uh, the idea of pride is kind of against it it's 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 a space for protest but the thing is to give it a little structure is what what we would rather say hmm. um is what we are trying to do all of us together and also to involve the young gen hmm. the young generation needs to know the history of pride what has happened in the yeah. past by the way kolkata pride walk is uh, asia's oldest and india's oldest pride walk 22 years ago this will be the 23rd year which was called the friendship walk friendship back. walk back right, then yeah. and it is as far as we know and still as we talk with other prides across it's one of the largest pride if not the biggest and is the most inclusive open minded most politicized pride most in a sense pride is a space where you can take out your political slogans without being barred and without being told by the the reigning authority to say to say don't do this you know we took out you know pro palestine um uh, slogans maybe the center maybe you know we were talking about everything we were talking about oppression but other prides in the country have been censored and some of them have been cancelled so we are in a very precarious situation at this point of time in the country so we are pride is a place through which the, it, it, there is a lot of voice which is echoing across the country so pride then for you is a loudspeaker right it's a loudspeaker which allows you to have a voice yes. in a city where a lot of people might be intimidated to talk about their sexual sexuality yeah. talk about and not just sexuality talk about their political opinions talk about like not be able to have a voice sometimes and i'm yeah. guessing through you guys yeah. you've been able to create a voice for a lot of people who have yes not. so the whole see pride started as a protest when martha p johnson you know you know threw that bottle back in uh, those days and protested against being you know uh, uh, n- not being allowed on streets not being allowed to be in a certain venue and everything um that is when pride and, and it in calcutta the form is still as a protest and when people are walking out in thousands together it also creates visibility mm. so throughout the year you may see how oh, i'm inclusive i'm seeing that there we are there part of um the whole fabric but we are not visible most of the times there are a certain um, class the trans people who are visible mostly this is one day when people come out in droves this time the count from the police was almost 
18 to 20,000 people when we walked on mm. 17 December through Park Street, right. which is a historic street. Okay. And to, for us to, we are the only organization who gets the permission. Somehow, our 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 police, our 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 municipality, our reigning government, everybody comes together to say yes. This is something we need to have in the city. This this talks about the city, the state being inclusive. So we are very lucky about that. So and you're lucky mm. also to a certain extent because of the work that you've done. It's not luck does not, you know. They, they say that luck favors the brave, right? You have to yeah. be in a position to be a receptacle for the luck. Yeah. It's probably coming, but yeah. if you had not done good things with it day in and day out, over time, all of that time galvanizing people and creating better, more inclusive spaces for them, probably this luck would not have happened. Like luck favors the brave, but I believe luck is the preparation to meet the chance. that you are prepared and the chance has come take it up mm-hmm. so the chances that we have been able to organize our all our team members everybody was there and we took the chance mm-hmm. and we were brave enough to go and talk to people and and we were not rejected and we, even if we are rejected we say like again again you have to knock on the doors mm-hmm. maximum they can say no they cannot put you down further right so right. so that's how you ask for your rights and you were talking about the law about you know what what's uh, is going to happen uh, with the supreme court uh, law is again the same thing we have to go and knock on the doors of the of the country of the of the supreme court and the judge all, all the high courts or everywhere to ask for the rights which we deserve as human beings that's what i ask for that's it yeah. that's it that's yeah. as simple and in, in conversations in office spaces in institutions any place i guess you know it's it's what you do your actions and people are not saying don't don't just respect me for my you know orientation or my identity respect me as a person as yeah. one of you as it's just as simple as that yes. it's about reclaiming spaces as yes. well no i i'm very i've always been very curious about you know my first interaction with you was perhaps through pink parties yes and as absolutely. an ally i think it's something that i first as an ally and second as a person who likes partying yes. quite a bit <laughs> so i guess it's it was one thing that you've done very who you had done very successfully yeah. and you still continue doing yeah. I'm very curious about how the concept I I have heard some rumors about how it started but I would like to hear it from you. How did pink parties start? Why are they called even pink parties? So, uh as almost 12 13 years ago we used to you know there there were no specific places for the LGBTQI people to go and hang. So we would so if 10 of us would go to one venue and hang together and and that becomes like a gay venue lgbtqi venue so we 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 found a venue in the city where it was lovely and also we like some sort of alternate uh, maybe a bit dingy maybe maybe cozy small size not too big and um, this place was called i can take names i have to take names because it's part of the history of pink party and also pride wilson uh, not wilson it was ldv the lord alche vita under new empire ah okay so uh, and and uh, one of my trans friends was stopped all of a sudden they used to go but all of a sudden the manager said no we will not allow i'm like hello we come in droves so many of us on weekends why are you stopping so i knew the owners i called up the owners but still the next day they were, they were stopped and i said and my thing is when i understand if 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 there is no affirmative action from the from the uh, you know organization regarding lgbtq i i immediately like pull back i said okay you have shown what you wanted to do we will do what we feel we want to do we are not going to break our way in so immediately i gathered my friends and said what can we do i called a few of my friends in the industry in the hotel industry and said i asked another uh, club and they they said yeah, yeah yeah come together we will have evenings for you guys immediately we shifted and what happened that's overnight a uh, facebook group was formed and that's how pink parties kolkata pink also uh, has been a color of of worldwide protests um and also a color of awareness for the hiv aids movement and everything so we thought pink would be a relevant color but also we were conquering the idea of pink being only identified with some kind of a women's color you know like the a gender gender, gender nuance, nuances were there we said it can be a color belonging to everybody you know right. male female and that's how 12 years ago the pink parties were born and you know since then we have hopped to different clubs and they have been so hospitable we you know they used to keep bouncers for us a, yeah. a, a floor booked for us a zone booked yeah. for us we will go they will give us great deals i'll tell you what 
you all in general wouldn't be able to get those deals which we get to uh, you mean, know get out of we them we hosted a few ping parties yes. i know with the kind of deals <laughs> we've given for ping but no yeah. but it's, it's always great nights because there's great sales and more importantly it's great people ooh, just ooh, ooh. you know hanging out with uh, yeah. you know having a good time yeah. so you know why not and then we moved um, and then keshav wanted to do something dear keshav suri of the lalit so he um he said would you like to partner with us and do it and ever since for the last 7 8 years we have been doing it lalit but we still go out whenever anybody who wants to host anything who wants to do and like in the last one year we have been doing our karaoke nights at tavern so if it is quite fun by the way super fun i remember that last time yeah. i joined for one of those yeah. nights oh my god that's a that's great energy in that yeah. in that room so now it's become a regular right like so now you have a regular meeting place on park street which is the tavern so we meet every thursday so thursday nights uh so tonight tonight yeah so 8 pm onwards and people are there till 11:30 12 and yeah. they go home so it's a casual midweek you're not going to do overdo you don't want to overdrink you're there to meet sing along if you want to or do adda you and and it has now become part of the whole calcutta story and the and the lgbtqi search and the googling people people know and people drop in from all across the world travelers they're coming because they want inclusive spaces and that has a different energy right. that way yeah. and karaoke is catching up so that's great you know as a bong or calcutta and you give a mic or give a anything surila and they will start singing you yeah. always have something up our sleeve yeah, this is yeah. the easy so that's easy. a great way to bring together but was there a narrative about the pink parties where the founder of the lalit group of hotels he himself has always been a big proponent of Uh, the pride movement has there yes so keshav and his partner so uh, he's the ceo the the the, the uh, keshav suri of lalit he um uh, he started kitisu as from his vision which was in Kitis, delhi right so he later on became friends with me and that's when he asked me to bring uh, mm. you know the the the, the ping party to lalit kolkata which was the wilsons because we didn't have a kitisu we do, we didn't have a kitisu and now it kiri the kirisu pops up in bigger events big ways you know bring artists from across the right. country and the, the world queens coming so in he gives me all the free hand but also it is also like a symbiotic thing that we give him the you know the crowd and the people to go and party and do but also it's not a profit making venture always it's like always as long as we break even it's fine yeah. but the thing is it's a place he was big big hearted enough to open up the space mm. to give it to people and also all people from all walks of life are welcome there mm. you know you know a lot of trans people feel you know there's a little bit of a uh, hesitance to it's a big hotel how do you walking all the staff you go there you know everybody they sensitize they're sensitized yeah. they employ trans people they yeah. employ people from the lgbtq it's encouraged within yeah. the, you know it softens down so much when you start employing lgbtq people in your organization because you become more receptive and sensitive to different kind of genders around you mm. and at times the 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 testosterone levels get yeah. toned down in every organization some places you get higher productivity because the lgbtq people are strugglers they are fighters they are survivors mm. so they put in you know double the amount because they are they have to prove to the rest of the world that they are better so that's to how themselves also perhaps them, sometimes to them themselves obviously because that yes i have come out because they have faced so much obst- you know obstacles it's not easy in india to come out i am among the few ones who have been able to come out and like boldly say that whoever i am because i had my own earning capacity you know i mm. when i started my brand after that i came out mm. before that i was still dependent on my parents that's how india runs right so it's not easy but uh, my point being you were talking about pink party's history with keshav suri's lalit runs now and now now he hires me to do other events across the country because the way we do it that's what i'm saying what calcutta does today mm. like calcutta comes out it is um, a big float in the um, in the pride nowhere else in the country it's allowed or they don't have the capacity to do it how we party or how we organize events that's how he wants to replicate across the country and that's a big sign that whatever we are doing and the way we run the show um, there is something good about it because we are being taken so i just did a tour with um valet chachki who's a drag race winner internationally who was coming to bombay and delhi so i went and designed the shows across 
so so whatever we are visualizing it's been right and right. we are we have got more about planning coming ahead in the coming year i mean i look at everything as an opportunity and as because i've been wired like an entrepreneur mm. so i think and this is something we were discussing with mudar i think the yeah. other day with about about the non fair weather months of calcutta being the actual opportunity uh months here that mm-hmm. because there's during winter there's no time to do anything because there's so many events and one all day the there's time. like 25 events yes, that are yes, happening yes. and all of them good yeah. at least decently good that you at least five of them you'll find that you'd want to go uh, you are partnered with two of them you have to go something but in the i'll just ask sometimes one thing i'll inter- uh, intervene have you ever in in the day when you saw like 5 to 10 events you just put your leg up you just oh, yeah. i don't want to go anywhere i'm your partner ahmad dara you don't go anywhere you just sit at home put on put on a nice movie go exactly. chill at, and that's dark cuz it's your brain just short circuit ho jayega so that, that's, nice. that's the fair weather thing that at times you are like you will switch off you will not do anything there's too many things happening but then on the other months like let's say in the peak of summer when there's not that many things happening that's when you should be idly finding interesting ways of bringing people together which is not happening during the summer months summer as months, much true, yeah so true. maybe that's an interesting opportunity we should talk about but also i want i'm very curious about how your sexual orientation in general affects your sense of design do you think it does one and if it does how is it has it some have you seen patterns in in the way that you work which has been different in the way uh with with people who identify as straight for example i think we are more sensitive and sen- sensitized in different ways because um i will well, though we have not been oppressed or we have faced any kind of backlash because of our sexuality but we are built in a certain way i will not say we are different or anything but to be sensitive to people or or to the marginalized mm. so we understand where it comes from so our designing is very sensitive at least our brand mm. devanil has a lot of political message through and through one of the collections we were just few days ago i was showing my friend and it was like the valley of the missing flowers where the whole generation of kashmiri peoples have vanished and what happens to those families mm. it was uh, we went to bnale to see a show and we saw bharat sikkas in kochi yeah. and there was this whole installation where it in the by the uh, you know where uh, bharat sikka has documented families where their belongings are there but the person is not there so the whole collection was inspired from that the valley of missing flowers we had the change of guard when the communism was going the new power was coming that collection was also there that is one of our most talked about collection with you know che guevara prints on sarees then we had lots of other things when things which are disappearing like our taxis when taxis were not a cool print that time we did batik with them all our collections are always being very sensitive to things happening around us mm. and um i don't know whether it's our sexuality or not but we have been taught to look and look f- and then another collection was jal jungle zameen which is jal jungle zameen is one of the tribal movement happening from different deep interiors of the tribe where they're trying to preserve you know the things which are slowly disappearing so that it it says it all jal jungle zameen so that was also so our collections are subtly always have a political message through them and um, while well, all we, art is inherently political right some it's people look at this fashion as very uh, frivolous right they they look at it as, as like the rich man's game i said through that also we try to push it through to 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 make people wear what we have designed with little secret messages or something <laughs> there and uh, we have made people wear love is love which without them realizing straight people who are not even whether they are supportive or not but it's coded inside our prints and things like that it's very interesting the way we we kind of put through whatever little subtle political beliefs we are part of and and uh, i cannot claim that we are anything any different but we may be sensitive to the We're needs sensitive. of the marginalized and going forward i think um uh, we we've we've done things for education together i mean the last fundraiser that we yes. did for ektara, ektara that we kind of collaborated on and I've, it's been such a great experience also working with a place that works with kids of a marginalized communities first generation school goers providing Absolutely. them top notch global standard education and then you understand why they have so many volunteers like us 
you know, just happy to contribute in some way or when, the other. When they started, it was amazing. I saw them grow from this little, you know, one little building was there. We were trying to work with the parents of the, you know, uh, we always very easily otherize them, you know. They are, they are coming from there, you know, very easily. But we don't try to get into there and walk in, the sh- walk in their shoes to understand what absurd poverty can do to you. Yeah. What it can do to you, it can take away your sense of dignity, everything possible. Ektara was, it's trying to change from a generation, you know, empowering those girl child first. It's all, all girls, like, you know, the thousand girls. Right. But, the, but the girl child cannot alone be empowered if the parents, at least the mothers are not empowered. Mm. So we were doing projects to empower the mothers, giving them stitching skills and everything. So through my network, then I put Kallol in charge. So Kallol now does his product production from there. So it's a cycle. To break the cycle, to be a disruptor, you have to think through. And Ektara has been doing it and, and in a brilliant way. Now to get tomorrow, uh, Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland to, to, to use music as the way of you know breaking out of it, I think is one of the most brilliant lateral thinking schools, which, which I would have been I mean, I'm happy to be a part of a school like that. Same, you know, like same. That. And I think a lot of people, a lot of yeah. educators from the city believe that it's the highest grades of education and it's sensitized. You sensitized. know, the, I love spending time at Ektara. We, we were running a campaign. I mean, of course, the education stuff we do, but we were running a campaign called Feed 750. Yeah. We went and actually cooked for all these kids, kids. you know, one uh, one afternoon and brought a couple of master chefs. And the, the way that the whole thing was received by the kids. kids. I think that's what was fantastic. You know, just the way that they are, the, the, the amount of time that you're spending with them, they think of it as absolute with, with joy. They're just Absolutely. there receiving all the love and giving back so much love. I think that makes me want to do it. And hopefully my question, I had a question. I, now yeah. I forgot, I think yeah. what exactly I wanted to ask, but your point of, you know, education uh, being a lever. If you were to become the education minister, let's say of our state or our country, what would you do to bet, create a better next generation of people? As I said, first first thing first, almost throughout the syllabi, you 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 know you you sit down and look through so many subtle kind of discrimination teachings are taught to us, mm. and you sit down and change that from the beginning. Okay, uh, and because from that level is where the first level of you know, you know what, what do you call it? The germination of ideas happen. Mm-hmm. You know, they us Hindus, Muslims, they are invaders. This is what happened. All throughout in the history, everybody is talking about it, but saying this is how history has progressed. One invader has come and taken over and everything. And but right now, our education flow is completely there in us. You know, changing that there in us a narrative has to be there, and an idea of nationalism I want to change. Is either you are nationalistic or you are a traitor. Mm. That is also being percolated through your education system. If you look, we are in Bengal. Believe me, we are we are in a much much privileged state. Mm. Until and unless what you eat, what you talk about, what you wear about, all of these get controlled by the governing body and authority. You won't realize once it's taken away. At least we still have it. But imagine and all of these things are gone and through education, they will start changing the minds of the young generation. Because the young generation is receptive to whatever is given to you. So, and, and they don't look at gender and caste and color. It's not, young people don't have the understanding for no, it. No, whatever you tell them. Whatever you tell, tell them, them. And you keep telling them. It's yeah. also not just tell them once because, you know, over time, their minds are, you know, very naive. They, they will learn what's being taught to them over and over. So, and... Also, if I am who has flunked in the year 12th, I will tell you what. I flunked in year 12 because I had to take up Hindi as a subject. And not once, but thrice. But at the same time, I I was getting through NIFT. First, I got through NIFT Calcutta, then NIFT Bombay. When on my third year, I was All India second in NIFT entrance exams. That's when my father said, okay, with my life savings, I will send you overseas. You know, we come from a upper middle class, but with not so much to send you over. But he did. So my education had something to do about the education system in India where only 
the 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 cream layer is taken care of we don't think of the back benches because that's where all a lot of the hard working people are there mm-hmm. the whole system has to be changed i know there are too many people being educated but the push has to be from the back because the hard workers are at the back at the back they are they are you know they are the what i see they create friendship network they're looking outside they're survivors they're they're looking at how i can do things better to survive this kind of injustice because only the front benches or the top of the class is being taken care and being put into the right places so our education has to be wholesome i mm. feel we need to change how we need to look because the hard workers always doesn't come from the front the hard workers are the ones who have to prove their worth and if we give importance to them they stick with you in the long run mm. that's how it is so i have been one of those back benches who realized that out of sheer hard work i may not be good at studies i'm great at sports i'm great at this i will work through it and i will go ahead and do it so and yeah you here so. you are here <laughs> you are life has ha- has been good because you put in the effort and uh, hopefully it's a, it's a very important lesson for young people watching yeah. as well if you really want it enough i don't think anybody can uh, and uh, you know anybody but can tell you no or not no. give you your place because yeah. you have to earn your place at the end of the day and hopefully we'll all take a little lesson from neil's book on on hard work and doesn't matter if you flunk three times because hindi was part of your syllabus and you're just not comfortable with hindi mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you did well Thank and, you. <laughs> and uh, i think we had a great conversation we yes, learned a we lot yeah. about uh, about your neil's life about what he thinks about calcutta and he thinks his calcutta is already quite relevant i i think uh, the every day that i hear from people like him who make the city relevant with every day of uh hard work with every drop of uh blood and sweat that they put into the city i mean we're in good hands just keep got to make it, keep making it more relevant with every day thank you and i uh, hope so too yes. i hope this conversations will continue with so many more people that we will have relevance as a curated when it comes together one day when you look back 5 years hence and all this conversation will make sense it will th- and not just the conversations the actions will also make yeah, sense the decisions yeah. that we took yeah. today for the betterment of our city and for the people of the city will make sense yeah thank you so thank much you. thanks so much for joining in for another episode of make calcutta relevant again the podcast it's been a pleasure talking to you signing off and uh, keep sharing keep talking about the city with lots of pride and uh, Yeah with lots of pride. See, yes. I did Kolkata I wasn't planning pride. that. <laughs> Kolkata pride that was that was not a plug that was planned but uh, see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you.